If we look at 2020, it was really a tale of two halves. We had the first half of the year with lockdowns and really shutdowns in some markets where our dealers couldn't open. And needless to say, uh, the market reacted to that. But already in the third quarter, we could see sales picking up, picking up strongly for us based upon our very attractive product portfolio led by the Chinese market. This momentum has now continued into quarter four, and we're looking uh, cautiously optimistic at uh, 2021, even though the COVID pandemic is, of course, not over. Yeah, the renewed lockdowns are not only affecting Europe, but also other parts of the world. So how is that going to affect your sales forecast? I think we have to calculate with the first six months of this year still having some, some disruption here and there, and we have to be flexible and deal with those things. But the underlying demand that we felt coming back in the second half of 2020, that underlying demand, we see that also in 2021. And the product momentum that we have is phenomenal. So the launch of the new S-Class, uh, a whole myriad of electric vehicles coming. That's why we feel confident that 2021 uh, could be a pretty good year of growth. Many car manufacturers have introduced their cars to the market at uh, stock discounts. How have you been doing that? And is that sales momentum also translating into more higher profitability? Pricing power has always been a, an important element of the Mercedes strategy. Uh, we offer more to our consumers and of course we charge a little bit more as well. Uh, so as we have seen the markets continue, we have been very careful on that side. And as a matter of fact, on, in terms of, of discounting, uh, we have paired that back in the second half of uh, 2020. So this is not driven by trying to push offerings into the market. It's more of a pull effect as far as Mercedes is concerned. Let's talk about the US market because this market is still down also in the fourth quarter and still obviously it's a very important market. So when are you expecting it to recover? Well, the United States, as is the case with Europe, is still affected by COVID. Let's, there are no two ways about that. So I think as the vaccine rolls out and we return to some level of normality during these next six months, uh, maybe into the third quarter, uh, we think that will be coming back because inevitably there will be some pent up demand as well uh, with consumers coming back into the market. But maybe we have to be a little bit more patient than, uh, than the boom that we have seen in China. Um, you've just um, introduced the hyper screen um, as of yesterday. So would you say that innovation makes you more competitive uh, towards Tesla? As the original inventor of the automobile, pioneering and pushing the boundaries of what's technologically possible, it's, it's, it's in our DNA, it's in our genes. So when we started with the project of the hyper screen, we said, how can we do something that's absolutely spectacular for the new EQS flagship electric car that we're launching later this year? And the hyperscreen, not only is it, it's almost like a piece of art, but it's also a window into a world of digital content uh, for the driver and for the passenger for that matter. Uh, so I think this is, this is a little bit of a game changer. It takes our so-called MBUX system to the next level. Looking at the valuation, Tesla just hit a new record high. Looking at your valuation, it's still far below uh, anywhere where Tesla is trading in terms of PE multiples. When are you expecting that to pick up? Uh, the traditional OEMs have still been uh, watched by the financial market with some caution during this transformation. We're in the middle of a transformation of the automotive industry. That will go through this decade and beyond. So what I think the financial market is looking for here is, is some proof points for the traditional automakers that they will be able to switch, switch to electric drivetrain, switch into this digital business model where you have additional revenue streams. We're well underway of doing this. And if you look at the valuations of some of these tech players or new players coming in uh, with partly very high valuations, well, that should serve as an inspiration. Uh, uh, there is more potential out there.